So where does the madness end? And besides continuing to pray, what is our nation's faithful to do in the face of a rising tide of anti-Christianity? Here with us now to help answer that question is Terry Schilling, the president of the American Principles Project. Thanks for being here tonight, Terry. Thanks for having me, Kara. Great. So Nietzsche was famous for saying that we killed God. And despite being an atheist himself, this German author and thinker didn't think that having a godless state would bring anything good. In fact, he predicted it would cause the demise of civilization as we know it. And of course, we saw that play out in the 20th century. So do you think those predictions are coming true as we pull further and further away from our Judeo-Christian roots as a nation? Absolutely, Kara. The founding fathers were very clear when they founded this country in the hundreds of pieces of writing that they did that America and the Constitution would only work under a righteous and religious people. And primarily what they meant by that was a, a Christian religion. Uh, where people like Abraham Kendi go wrong is they don't even understand Christianity or the basics and fundamentals of it. You know, Christ died uh, and it, the Catholic Church was one of the original churches founded and Catholic, the word Catholic means universal. It's a universal church that spreads across all continents and it's the same principles for Christianity. We don't look at race, we look at actions and values. It's, it's very much Martin Luther King Jr., the continent of our character, not the color of our skin. And I'm not surprised that people like Ibrahim Kendi want to try and pervert uh, Christianity to be a form of white supremacy because Christianity offers something that Ibrahim Kendi and these woke progressives don't offer, which is forgiveness and redemption. The, if you listen to the readings, and, and, and that's something that I've done, is I've actually read Ibrahim Kendi's books, they don't offer any path of salvation, redemption, or forgiveness. It's just eternal suffering and recompense and never forgiving anyone. It's a constant class war and a class struggle between all the different races and religions. It's an absolutely miserable situation that they want to drive us into, and we should reject them entirely. We should, and it's such a fake gospel for, for for him to be for him to be trying to say that we should focus everything on the here and the now instead of our our path towards salvation and finding God and rising above the the political banter that we hear back and forth right now on this world. Well, I think it's usually said for us Christians that we're supposed to be live, living in the world, but not exactly of the world. And of course, you see when it gets mired down as a political football, so you have a bunch of counterfeit Jesus is basically that everyone dreams up how they want Jesus to fit into their pretty little mold for their own political purposes. And then really, in many ways, that's that's idolatry. If you dream up in your idea, in your head of a fake Jesus who just says everything that you want him to say and that he disparages everything that you want to disparage, that's not the real Jesus Christ who calls us to become better and to grow as people. And so unfortunately, you see this get mired down and then you see something as beautiful and sacred and holy as religion mired down in, in politics of today. And that's it, it's a really sad thing to see it play out right now and to see the left especially forcing it down our, our throats in this way. And I know you the American Principles Project, I, I have a clip I want to show our, our audience that you recently put out on how you guys want to help address this problem. Let's roll the, the clip. New public schools are out of control. They're teaching our kids that America is evil. They're teaching them to judge people based on skin color. You gonna deliberately teach kids? This white kid right here got it better than you because he white? They're even teaching elementary school students that they can change their gender. And when Virginia parents fought back, school boards called them domestic terrorists. The National Association of School Boards is asking the Biden administration to investigate upset parents as potential domestic terrorists. And what does Democrat Terry McAuliffe have to say to these parents? And I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. And I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. Terry McAuliffe doesn't think you should be in charge of your kid's education. Parents, it's time to fight back. We need to keep Terry McAuliffe out of office. He's a threat to Virginia families. Talk to me about that ad we just saw. Well, Kara, it's very simple. There is an actual war on families, on parents, and their ability to determine the content of their children's education. We have seen parents across the country, millions of them, go to their school board meetings and voice their concerns and their dissent with the radical new curriculum of critical race theory and this new gender theology that is being taught in schools across America. 
We didn't uh, you know, exaggerate schools across America that are funded by our tax dollars are teaching our kids that America's evil to judge their peers by their skin color. And they are also not just teaching kids to change their gender, they're encouraging children to change their gender. And people like Tara McAuliffe, who's running for governor of Virginia, believe that parents have no right, no ability to tell schools what to teach and what they can't teach their children. It's an absolute disgrace. It's a much more aggressive and coercive war against families and parents than we've seen ever before in American history. And we need to show these people that if you come, if you come for our children, if you attack parents' rights, you are unfit for public office and you will be thrown out. It's that simple. It is that simple, and that's exactly what we need right now, especially when we see this fake gospel just, just flowing out everywhere, unfortunately, because we kicked God out of the public square so many decades ago in this great nation of ours, and it left a, a God-shaped hole in our hearts, and too many people now try to fill that, what should be filled with God, they try and fill it with, with politics and divisive rhetoric. So thank you for everything that you do with the American Principles Project. Thanks for joining us tonight, Terry.